Uh, kia ora tato. So my name is Dave, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the formal education system, because that's where a lot of time and energy is being spent by young people and where a lot of the money goes into. And so my experience with that system started as a secondary school teacher, a high school teacher, if, if you're from another country. My first lesson was that not every young person wants to learn. In fact, when I, when I first turned up on my very first day of being a teacher, I'm in the principal's office and he's telling me about what the job's going to be like. This one kid kind of turned in there, already having got in trouble before school has even started. And so the principal walks up to him, ready to just like tell him off, rip into him. And this kid just kicks him in the shins and, and runs out of the room. And I was like, what is going on? And if I'm being like completely honest, in the back of my mind, I was like, thank goodness that kid is not my problem. And so I kind of went to my class. And then about four hours later, I saw this kid getting escorted to my classroom and my heart just sank. But this, this kid taught me a lot more about what it's like to be a struggling student than, than almost anybody else could have. Because what his life was like is that he'd get a test back from school roughly every two weeks. And he'd be failing all the time. So can you imagine being in a job or in a situation where every two weeks you were getting told that you were failing or you sucked at what you're doing? Like how long are you going to hang around that situation or want to engage? It just creates this like failure cycle where you go from failing, you lose a bit of confidence, so you don't try so hard, so you fail some more, and it just spirals out of control. But what was really interesting is after we spent, we ended up getting on quite well, spent about 15 minutes a day just working through some stuff until he started passing his first maths test. And the interesting thing was it was just 15 minutes, but that one math success then meant that the cycle reversed a lot. So he got a little bit more confidence, would try a little bit harder, and then would engage in some more success. So this was really, really interesting to me because in the big scheme of life, as you'll all know, one math test is like meaningless. It doesn't mean much. But it really changed the whole trajectory of where he was going. He'd kind of viewed himself as someone who, I'm not good at learning, I'm not smart, I don't, I don't want to engage, to someone who thought, I can do it, I want to do it, and I'm going to try harder and engage in things. And that, whatever you think of the formal assessment system, and I don't think that highly of it, it still had the power to, to empower young people, which is kind of cool with success. And so the big problem I saw was that a lot of these people who were struggling didn't have access to extra help. So if I, as a teacher, wanted to engage all of my students with just 15 minutes a day, that's 25 hours. It's just an impossible task to do. And it's not a lot of time to, to, to do anything. And so what I did is made a video series, which was just telling my students exactly what they needed to do in maths to get through their exams. Real simple stuff and put it online. And it went from about 50 kids that were in my classes actually started using it, which I was delighted with. They told some of their friends, so after about two weeks, there were maybe 70 kids who were using it. And then after another couple of weeks, they told their friends who told their friends, and like 4,000 kids from all different parts of the country had somehow heard about this and come on and, and were learning these courses. To the fact that they were doing about 10,000 hours of these video lessons every single day within, within the first month or two. So it was this really highlighted problem that access to, to help is, is a big thing. Now it's grown in the last year to about 150,000 students and there, we've added in other, other programs, courses, that kind of thing. But the really cool part is it's not just access to learning. Once students have come online and done all of their learning, they can actually click a button and sit their real exams, which will give them real high school qualifications at the end of it. So it means that you can actually, like anybody in this room, for example, you guys could go online now and get high school credit or get high school certificates. I don't know why you would want to, but, <laughs> but theoretically you could. But the cool thing is it, it turns any room into an accredited classroom. So this could be a refugee camp, a prison cell, a hospital ward, an international room. Now you kind of get the ability to put formal education, real education, out anywhere incredibly low cost. And that's a really exciting thing. So that's the kind of access problem. But my question and my challenge for myself and what I hope to be working on is the fact that it's fairly irrelevant right now. If you go to school and you're sitting in, and maybe Maha, you'll be able to be able to attest to this, but you sit in class and you're like, when am I ever going to use this in real life? And it's like, it's just, it, it, to be fair, you probably don't use most of it ever. But the cool thing is, is if you look around this room, so much of what we're doing is really relevant to making a better future. It's interesting, it's exciting, you can get passionate about it, all the things which I hoped that I'd been exposed to when I was in the school system. So what we're looking to do now is map all projects, and literally almost any project now, we have the ability to map back against the formal curriculum and give people their real high school credit exams and qualifications for doing this work. It could be totally outside of school, it could be within school, it could be by themselves afterwards. 
So I don't have the ability to know all of these amazing environmental, wellness, uh, crypto, all of these cool things which are making the new world an incredible place, but you guys all do. And I really want to work to bring those programs in front of young people so that they can do that and make it part of the formal education system so they'll actually be exposed to it. Because I think the challenge is that if we want a better world, we need to invest in young people because they are the ones who are coming through. And if they know what's relevant, what's impactful, what's exciting, then they have the power to kind of change it, pick that up and run with it. So I'd love to talk to anybody who wants to get their stuff in front of young people. Um, I'm not 100% sure how the logistics of this are going to work on, on such a scale, but uh, I'd be really keen to find out. Kilda, thank you. Thank you.